Asia is facing a major squeeze on its staple food. The price of rice at world markets has jumped 50% over the past two months and has at least doubled since 2004, with more steep rises predicted. Many Asian nations are now banning or restricting rice exports to control prices at home. In the first part of our special series on rice, the BBC's Lawrence Ong reports from the Philippines. I'm at the International Rice Research Institute just south of Manila. Back in the 60s, crop scientists here helped bring about a green revolution in Asia. The region's fast-growing population could be sure of enough to eat thanks to modernized rice farming techniques. But today, 40 years on, experts here are very concerned. I'm joined now by Dr. Robert Ziegler, a director general at Erie. Dr. Ziegler, what is going on right now? Is Asia facing a rice crisis? Well, I'm not certain that crisis is exactly the right term, but we are certainly facing uh, shortages. There's a tightening of supplies. What's happening is that we're having a convergence of events uh, such as population growth, rapid economic growth in China and in India, for example, a decrease in available land as it's being converted to urban, uh, urban areas, uh, decrease in water as it's uh, being diverted for use in uh, industrial activities. Uh, these are coming together to, to tighten rice supply. And one solution to easing shortages, many say, is genetically modified crops, uh, which Erie is doing some research on here as well. But what do you have to say to religious groups or nonprofit organizations who are so strongly against GM crops? Well, uh, I'm not aware of, of, of major religious objections to GM crops. We believe that uh, uh, the tools of biotechnology have a lot to offer, including GMO crops. Uh, they should be assessed in a way that, that all sectors of society can feel comfortable with them. And here in the Philippines, the country used to be self-sufficient in rice, uh, and now it seems to be struggling to secure enough supplies to meet domestic demand. What would your advice be for the government? The Philippine farmer is quite productive. Uh, uh, yields are much higher than those uh, of a Thai farmer. Now, having said that, uh, the government does need to, to reinvest in, in uh, uh, research, research and development. And in fact, I believe that research and development is going to be the key to providing long-term food security for the region. Dr. Ziegler, the Green Revolution was a miracle. Don't we need another one right now? What needs to be done? There's no question we need another Green Revolution. We need to uh, re uh, restart our investments in research and development. Uh, these have lagged for the last 15 years. I think we're paying the price for that neglect. We need to make sure our irrigation schemes are, are in place and we need to make sure that there are uh, 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 means to get the best technologies to the farmers fields. We need to look at the traditional extension systems and I think we need to look again at how we can have productive uh, pro-poor uh, private and public sector partnerships. Dr. Ziegler, thank you very much. Dr. Robert Ziegler, Director General at Erie. And tomorrow, I'll look at how all this is going to impact the people here in the Philippines. Meanwhile, the rice crisis is threatening even China's special administrative regions. China's Premier Wen Jiabao has promised to ensure rice supplies to Hong Kong and Macau following panic buying triggered by soaring prices. China, the world's top producer and consumer of rice, has stopped grain exports to ensure domestic supplies but it's making exceptions for Hong Kong, Macau, and even Taiwan.